and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and it's a new month here. It's April, and I'm talking about doubt this month. I'm going to give you strategies for how to overcome doubt because it doesn't matter who you are or what you want, you have struggled with doubt in some area of your life. And I'm going to start my podcast out today with a little bit of a hmm, maybe a rude way of asking you a question Do you have a big butt? The reason I'm asking is I talk to people every day with big butts and their butts get in their way. And what I really mean is I hear things like, I want to make a change, but I want to start my business, but, or I want my business to stop sucking the life out of me, but, but I don't have time, but I don't know how, but I can't afford help, but I don't think I can. And that last one that I don't think I can, that is the hugest goal killer of all. That, in a nutshell, is what doubt looks like in our head. So I'm asking, how many times have you thought about making a change? Do you doubt that you really can make the change? Do you say things like, hmm, I don't know if I can. So let's get real because of course you don't know if you can. You've never done this before. Or you've done it or tried it, but it hasn't succeeded the way you want. So of course your brain is searching for evidence that you can't make it work. That's what your brain does. Your brain is literally designed to keep you safe. And when you stay stuck and don't try hard things, you stay safe. Stuck, but safe. That's what your brain wants. I know that moving toward the hard thing is hard. Your brain knows that this is going to be hard, and because your brain wants to avoid hard things, it'll shut you down. It'll make you doubt yourself so that you don't get uncomfortable and you don't slow your brain down by trying to do something you haven't done before. So here's the big question. You understand the problem. It's doubt. But what are you supposed to do about this? Today, I'm going to present you with a strategy, a tool that I use that really helps me with doubt. But before we get into the strategy, I want to clear something up for you. It doesn't matter who you are, and it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're just starting out with an idea for your business, or you're pivoting and changing gears on something. It doesn't matter if you're leveling up to a new price point. Whatever the new goal you set for yourself, doubt will creep in. It doesn't matter how many times you've done something, when you level up, doubt will creep in. And my question is, well, why do we let this creepy little bitch into our lives? Because doubt is powerful, it's everywhere, and it doesn't need much to live off of. I like to think of doubt like the roach of my mind. Uh, It's very hard to get rid of, and it feeds off the junk that lives up there. Now, doubt can come from outside of ourselves It's from others telling us we can't, we shouldn't, we aren't capable. And when I say that, I immediately bring myself to experiences where somebody has said something to me that has caused me doubt. But doubt also thrives inside each of us. And for me, doubt grows and grows until sometimes I'm paralyzed by it. So I wanted to share this topic with you because With people I meet every single day, I notice how many times a big butt gets in their way. So the first thing to do is to notice how many times you're saying but to yourself, and you're going to start to stop the butts. But I can't afford it. I hear that a lot. But I don't trust this work to anyone else. 
so I can't offload it. But it's easier for me to do it by myself. These are all the kinds of buts that I hear that kill my clients. And these women, these women who want to level up or change or achieve, they're the exact woman that I love to see thrive. They're exactly the people that I create my programs for. What gets in their way is all of these buts. Now, I know all about these buts because I have them myself. And some women that I meet like to think that because I'm a confident person, I don't struggle with doubt. And so I'm here today to dispel that myth. I am confident, I show up as myself, and I struggle with doubt. I worry that I'm not going to get where I want to go. I worry that I've hurt people and been rude or thoughtless. I worry that I don't know what I'm doing. I worry that I can't really help my clients. I'm just like everybody else. I think a little dose of doubt makes me reflective. It inspires me to excellence and hard work. But where's the line between a healthy dose of doubt and a crippling case of it? So this is where I like to use a tool that my friend Tracy and I invented when helping each other through hard times. We call it and then what. So this and then what tool is something that I pull out whenever doubt creeps into my brain, which is like every single day, just like everybody else. Now, here's how it works. When doubt creeps into your brain, you're going to spend an unreasonable amount of time worrying about whatever this thing is. Doubt will say things like, are you crazy? Or who do you think you are? Doubt will say things like, what if this fails? What if someone doesn't like it? you're probably not the person to do this. Now, if you're like me, you think these thoughts a lot and they keep you stuck. But what if after you think the thought that's laden with doubt, you finished it with the question, and then what? And you have to unpack what really could happen if that terrible doubt turned out to be true. Here's a personal example. Before I dove into becoming a business owner, I was a teacher, not an entrepreneurial muscle in my body. I was terrified. What if I sucked at it? What if I brought nothing to the table? What if we failed? Now, all of these are valid thoughts, right? And I spent months pondering these thoughts. I doubt I'll be useful in this business. I doubt I'll be able to think like an entrepreneur. I doubt my friends and family will support my decision to leave teaching. And I want to unpack each of these thoughts for you using the and then what strategy. Let's do the one which is a big one. I doubt I'll be useful in the business. Now here I'm talking about my first business when I was an owner of a fitness studio. And no lie, this thought, I doubt I'll be useful in the business, was my biggest, heaviest thought. I feared that I wasn't bringing anything to the table. I wasn't creative. I wasn't strategic. I wasn't visionary. My other two partners were all of those things. I was just really organized and able to write fairly well. I didn't see my value. I truly didn't think I'd be useful once the beginning administrivia part of the business was all set. So P.S. Guess what? Administrivia never ends in a business. Organization and writing, they never end. Creating systems and policies and procedures and content, it never ends when you own a business but I'm digressing. Hold on. At that point, obviously, I couldn't know that I'd be vital to the business later on. I didn't know at that point that I'd learn how to become strategic, that I'd cultivate creativity, and that my very visionary partners would come to rely on my tactics and organizations to keep operations going. If I'd applied the and then what strategy, I'd have been able to overcome doubt more easily and more quickly. Here's how it would have looked if I had this tool back in 2013. If I said, what if I'm not useful in the business? And then what? Okay, well, it turns out I'm not useful in the business, then what? Well, then I make some choices. I either decide this isn't for me and I get out, or I create work to become useful, or I take some other action that feels right. Maybe I learn how to do the thing. But how would I have ever known if I didn't try? Honestly, what's the worst that could have happened? 
I bet you live in the stout space all the time, but you don't really unpack the answer to what's the worst that could happen. When we let doubt run our lives, we're letting the what ifs rule us. And the what ifs are bullshit. They aren't real. They're just questions. Here was my other debilitating thought at the time. What if I can't think like an entrepreneur? That's a huge doubt. Well, duh, I'd never been an entrepreneur. And man, do they think differently than employees do. Of course I had this thought. I'd been an employee to someone else for more than 30 years of my life. Of course my brain was trying to keep me safe. Here's the thing. My husband and my mother-in-law are both highly entrepreneurial and they talk about business a lot. So I knew for certain that I would need to shift my thinking when I started this business. But what if I couldn't? That was the doubt, right? Oh my God, what if I couldn't become an entrepreneur in my mind? And then what? What if I got into the business and couldn't shift into entrepreneurship? Well, that would suck, right? It would be uncomfortable. And frankly, it was something my business partner, Leslie, and I both struggled with. We had never owned a business before, and it was quite a shift from our previous lives. It was hard. But if I couldn't accept it, then what? Well, then I know I'd tried something and learned it wasn't for me. At least I'd know I'd gotten the insight to learn what to do next time. Or I could have gotten help and learned how to shift my mind and how to practice this new way of being. Being aware of the thought is important, but you can't live in the doubt You can't dwell there too long or it'll take you down. And that's why the and then what unpacking tool is super helpful here. I want you to remember, all of this is really just an experiment. If you think anyone out there is 100% clear, omniscient, and infallible, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Even that really successful person out there, that bajillionaire who's running a thriving, mind-blowing business, She wakes up some days and thinks, hmm, can I really do this today? I want to go to bed every night knowing I've done my best with whatever today's experiment was. Knowing that I gathered my research and learned something new about what to do next, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. But, but, and here's where my big butts show up. What if I failed today? What if the thing was hard today? What if I screwed it up today? And then what? Well, I wouldn't have died. I wouldn't have wasted my time because I would have surely learned something. I wouldn't have hurt anyone. I know that I'd have done my best. The end. It would have been hard, but I didn't die. Come on, my friend. It's time to see your doubt for the annoying little irritant she is. Don't let her rule the house. Yeah, she's a pain in the ass, but she's not in charge. You are in charge. Picture this. You're thinking about the business you want to boost, the life you want to have, the goal you want to reach. You want it really badly because I know how badly women want this thing and how much they have shoved it aside. So you want it. What are you thinking? What are you doing about it? What are you feeling? And then wait for it. The doubt creeps in. And then what? Now it's your turn. I want you to finish this story. Make up the ending. And then what? If you want support writing your ending, if you want support squashing doubt, you're literally the person I created my coaching programs for. Whether you're a potential for private coaching or group coaching, I've designed my programs to help you get what you need because I know that overcoming doubt and making up your own ending and getting the strategies that you need to hold yourself accountable and to reach your goals, those are hard things to do by yourself. So I'm here because I want to help you realize what to do first, what to do next, and how to take concrete steps forward. I'd love to have you get on my calendar to have a conversation because My programs are designed exactly for women like you, women who are tired of the doubt, tired of the what-ifs ruling your life. 
Now, next week, I'm introducing you to my best friend, Leslie. She's my former business partner also. And she's the one I told you about today. We both had really hard times getting through our business together. And then she had a really hard decision to make when she was starting her second business when we had closed our first business. And this decision ate her up for a while until she learned how to deal with the doubt. So she tells her story next week. And it's a really interesting, honest, vulnerable story. So tune in to listen to her realistic, truthful story. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the idea space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.